<laughs> All right, guys, here we go. It is time to jump into the next game. It is, oh my lord, another victim, a buzzing bee, one of my, my good friends and a fantastic streamer. Up here in the top right, she's about to fall victim to Florencio. Oh no, it's Livy B. I'm kind of rooting for Livy B. I, I, a little bit. I'm, I'm torn. I'm torn. But to be real, I mean, she might be the defender of Zerg, the rusher of Mutalisks. She who loves spamming Nidus Worms. We were playing team games yesterday and she must have Nidus Wormed like 32 nerds on the ladder. Uh, and cackled madly the whole whole while. So, you know, I feel like when she gets gets down with her dirty strats, Livy can be just, she can be pretty filthy, but there's levels of filth. There's someone who might have a faint aroma around them as if they didn't shower after a trip to the gym. Livy B is at most reaching that level of filth. This man over here smells like a used diaper filled with Indian food that's been sitting in the dumpster for six days. That's right, he smells worse than Sex Panther. This, uh, he's, he's just, he's, he's part mermaid, he's definitely been in the sewer, he's definitely evil, and I'm pretty sure by this point he has an entire utility built filled with vials of his opponent's tears. This is Florencio. He's going to be sending a probe down around the map to avoid the Overlord, of course. One probe already in the main base. Livy B pulls three drones to respond, but she says, ah, uh, you know what? Looks like he's not cannon rushing. The probe's up here. I can see it. I think I'm safe. You know what? I'll send me Overlord down there. She knows it's Florencio as well. Oh, he's going to go for the wall off. Is he going to get it? Oh my god, I thought she was going to block that. You can see her spamming her clicks. And he gets the probe to safety. Ultimate douchebag style right here. Right now, Florencio slaps down a couple pylons on the table. Says, I raise you a wall off to your main base. And Livy says, screw you, you're an ass. Florencio says, thank you. She says, it's not a compliment. He says, well, for me it is. <laughs> Giggles a little bit to himself. She rolls her eyes and says, seriously, you're a sick bastard. Stop it. And, and that's where we need to remind Livy, this is just a unique strategy. This is not a gimmicky strategy. It's a unique strategy. Remember, reframe the way you think about StarCraft. Stay open to new things. And let's remember, this here, this, it might be a beginner-friendly strategy, but it's not, it's not noob. And remember, Florencio does actually use control groups. He's actually been evolving his play. He's been taking it to the next level. That's right, guys. This probe is on a control group right now. Look at that. He's using two control groups. People say Protoss just F2. People say Florencio only hotkeys one Nexus. Ha! <laughs> Idiots. He's, he's, he's control grouped a single probe as well. Absolute legend. A single spine crawl is going to try and root on the high ground there. But uh, Florencio is just going to fall back to the low ground, build a recessed pylon back there. Meanwhile, Livy B, she's thinking about blocking. Is she going to go for a proxy hatch? She's doing a nice bit of micro there, trying to screw with Florencio's ability to expand. Joke's on her. Florencio's, he maybe takes this base one in seven or one in eight games at most. Usually, Florencio's first expansion will be here. Uh, his brain, not quite the same as us. I do think that if I were somehow body swamped into Florencio's body, I'd probably like log on for the day to play some StarCraft games and I'd realize the whole map is upside down in his brain. Like, I feel like there's got to be some sort of rare... I don't, I don't want to call it a disorder because I think it's more of a gift, but something different about his brain that allows him to see like through the game. You know, for him... I, you know, I, I, I see a drone, I see, I see a probe here. He just sees the code behind it all. He sees the numbers inside the star, the star matrix. He is able to see deep within and plan ahead. And that is why there's a Chadre building on the way. I call it a Chadre building, but to be real, I feel like he just rolls a dice. I feel like it's Oracle's Phoenix or Void Rays in relatively equal numbers when he's playing against Zerg. And at the same, oh God, oh God. OP Nidus Worm. We were just talking about how Livy B has been spamming Nidus Worms like the sick puppy that she is. Oh god, she's been embracing her in a filth lord as well. There is a zealot in position, but a zealot will not stop a Nidus Worm. She's starting to break down that tentacle, whacking away on those cannons. Of course, they do not have high ground vision, so they cannot return fire. The Nidus Worm's done. I honestly, he's got to be dead. He can't possibly defend this. He's expanding to this base. 
He's taking his sixth as his natural? What the hell? This is such a rare move from Florencio. Two Zealots are in position. A Chad Ray frantically chrono boosting out. Livy B, you've got to drop that Nidus Worm now. You've got to drop it now. She's trying to hide it. Oh, she's afraid of doing it in his face. She morphs an Overseer. She's giving him time to get the Chad Ray out. How many queens has she got? She's got only one queen. She's got no anti air. She's given him too much time. Oh, Livy B, distracted by the pylons and the cannons in her natural. She's bought, uh, he's bought enough seconds there. She's trying to go in. She's looking for somewhere where he's not watching. She's looking for it. But the first Chad Ray emerges and it is ready to spray its laser beam all over this base. The Zealot takes out the Changing Livy, unable to land the Nidus Worm. And she's missed her window. The Overseer gets ripped to shreds. The Void Ray high fives itself because a Chad cannot exist without regular high fives. It's a little bit sad seeing one Chad on his own. He's like, man, I don't have anyone to hang out with and high five. Sometimes I get excited and I want a chest thump, but those probes, they're too, they're too virgin, man. None of them want to chest thump me as a greeting. I just need, a, I need another bro, man. I need another bro to hang out with. We can high five. We can watch sports ball and drink beers. We can, we can really, really just chat it up, you know, really chat it up. Uh, instead, that Void Ray for now at least has a solitary experience. Livy trying to mack her up. She's building queens. She's down at 22 workers versus 30 probes. The economy advantage going to Florencio, who's actually chrono boosting probes, and he's added a control, a nexus to his control group, and he's control grouped all three Stargates. This is the next level of Florencio. You know, I knew eventually we would have Neeb's skill rub off on Florencio. His habits are changing, you know? He's still got that special something that makes Florencio Florencio, but now he's using control groups? What, next thing you know, he's going to be making a warp gate upgrade or something? I don't know. It's, it's crazy to just see him evolve so much, you know? From just a, your regular no, local neighborhood sewer mermaid. Didn't really exist for many purposes other than to just spread poo around and be annoying. And now he's like a, a fancy sewer mermaid, you know? He's like the mascot of the local neighborhood. Occasionally, there's like a car accident. He like pops out of the manhole, helps someone to safety, and then disappears back into the sewer. You know, he's, he's really getting fleshed out as a character. He's not just a simple one-dimensional, I'm going to build a nexus in your base and recall zealots like he was for the first 10 episodes of the Florencio Files. I feel like he's starting to just kind of develop an even stronger character. And uh, this Void Ray comes in for a bit of fancy harass. Look at that focus fire. Gets two drones into the low hit points, then changes targets multiple times so that he almost dies. A typical uh, Florencio maneuver. Remember, Florencio likes to purposefully split the damage up because if your opponent's units have to then regenerate, that's actually free damage that you can deal later. So you're actually providing more hit points, which can inflict more damage to your opponent. So it's just a mathematical win. A lot of pro gamers, whenever I try to explain this concept to them, they're always telling me that it doesn't make sense. But realistically, I mean, I think it's just a matter of time until we can convince them to go and learn about the science uh, at Florencio Science School and really start to understand the finer physics of the game, you know? The, the calculations, opportunity cost, um, spread damage regeneration uh, effectiveness theory is what we call that one. And it really is a, a very useful technique. His opponents often look confused. They go, is he trying to kill this, that, or that? And then eventually... You know, he comes back and he, he gets to do that damage all over again once they're regenerated because of his high-level prioritization. Oh, Disco Ball's coming across the map. He's been massing oracles in the back of his base. Fantastic micro. Look at that. Did you see that? A corrosive pile. One of the spells which technically hits air units but is almost impossible to land. Florencio, showing his unique skill, lets them hit the Void Ray specifically so Livy B thinks she's still got a chance in this game. And then he swings in with the next wave, which is a whole ton of disco balls in the main. That spore crawler goes down. The other ones aren't ready. And Livy B, already down on workers, just loses 15 workers in an instant. The queens are going to go down as well. All of her mobile anti-air gets ravaged. And Florencio just going to eradicate that spore crawler. He's going to take out the lair as well. There is a spire almost finished. We are going to see, does Livy B go corrupt? Does she go mutilist? She's going to go nine mutilisks in response to this, but they're not going to be out in time. That lair, the Oracle's getting low on energy, and the Oracles do get out of there. Florencio pulling back at the opportune time. I mean, this is also a new evolution. Do you guys remember when Florencio, he would just fly those Oracles into Spore Crawlers, hit the Extractor, lose all his Oracles, and run away? These days, he pulls back with a bunch of them damaged, but not dead. He lets their shields regenerate. Like, honestly... Every, every single time I see this man take another step in this understanding of this beautiful game of StarCraft, I am shocked. I am impressed. But uh, he's still building oracles even though he's seen a spire. So this has definitely got to be one of those 
scientific decisions that's a little bit beyond my understanding. Waits to the last possible second, cancels the oracles, and then builds three phoenix. Uh, he wants to give these muters a chance. So notice the oracles are now coming out. They're shaking their booties. They're saying, look at me, look at me. They're twerking. They're working. And the muters are chasing them. Muters aren't the brightest creatures. So, uh... Thankfully, Florencio here, able to sacrifice his Disco Balls to buy a bit of time for his probes. Actually, look at that, curves away, the Muta's unable to catch him. And buys time for the Phoenixes to build up at time, at home. Uh, he's also just got the Nike upgrade, running shoes for all the Zealots, and a pack of them moving across the map right now. Oh, lures them away, and Florencio, by the way, I haven't talked about this much. Uh, this is probably, I think, the, the real change behind all the changes. Why has Florencio evolved so much? He used to be a recall addict and he's just not anymore. That was a tactical strategic use of recall. He hasn't used it much in these games anymore. He only uses it when he needs to now. He used to just use it constantly for no reason at all. He'd be winning a game with an army, pushing in for the victory and he'd recall home. He was a, he was a pure addict. He was just waiting for it to come off cooldown so he could inject that sweet recall into his veins. He was just, he honestly had, no, he had no, no decision making before. It was just pure impulse. Just wanted wanted to get that fix every time, but now look at this hunts down every single one of Livy B's muters. His zealots run in, and Livy is like, God damn! Wave after wave of douchebaggery. She taps out. She can't handle the heat. Florencio, is he? Does he stay in the game? He actually left that game just a few seconds after. Wow. Is is he becoming chivalrous or something? Is he like, oh? I won't stay in there for two minutes killing your buildings. Maybe it was a show match. I did see Neuro was in the game. So this may have been a show match that Neuro was casting. Who knows? Who knows? Damn Doorbell, thank you so much for the 200-bit cheer, my friend. Uh, welcome, guys. Thank you for the support. That was kind of incredible. Are we sure that was Florencio, says Flotch? Let's be real. He probably just tossed the controller over to Neeb. I, I, I'm like, I want to I wanna give Florencio credit as if Neeb's teaching him. But let's be real. He was probably like, oh, I've got a micro. Gives the Xbox controller to Neeb. Neeb plays for like five minutes straight. Gives the controller back and Florencio starts like flying void rays into corrosive bile and stuff again. Florencio is in chat. He actually says, yep, confirm that was actually Neeb. I, I was just having a, a break, having a bit of a smoke or something. Okay, cool, man. Good good to see you're not too changed from the old days. You're just more comfortable letting him take over the controller. Good to know. 